What is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PC port for Spider-Man Miles Morales, which at the time that you're probably going to be seeing this posted to YouTube will be available over on Steam. It's coming out today, November 18th, and it is going to be $50, which is a little bit much, honestly, for Miles Morales and the experience of it. Don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic game. I played this on the PS5 uh, back when it came out in 2020. It was pretty much a launch title for the PlayStation 5, and it's great. If you liked Spider-Man, you're going to like Miles Morales. It's not like a full-fledged sequel. This is more like, it's more like an expansion or like a standalone uh, sort of DLC. It's much bigger. It's not like a couple of hours or anything. It's a good like eight to ten hours. And, you know, if you stretch it out and do all of the different side activities and everything, you can probably get yourself a good 12 to 15, maybe maybe even more than that, but uh, not too much more. It's not it's not as vast and as big as as uh, the regular Spider-Man game, but, you know, you still have the full city of New York. It's got lots of really good story quests and characters and all of that, beautiful visuals and graphics. So we're going to be taking a look at the PC port, which is pretty much the same as uh, Spider-Man, which came out just a few months ago, thankfully, on PC. So we're going to jump into the graphics options, and we'll talk about the performance and everything for Miles Morales. But first, today's video is brought to you by KeysFan.com and their software super deal where you can get some of the best prices out there on Microsoft software, especially with my coupon code, you can get half off of Windows keys as well as 62% off on Microsoft Office products like Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Pro, and Office 2019 Professional Plus, and Office 2021 Professional Plus, and they've also got a bundle with Windows 10 Pro and Office 2019 in the same package. To save money on Windows 10 Pro, just go ahead and add the key to your cart, which starts off at $15 and 17 cents. But once you get into your cart, you can go ahead and apply my discount code at checkout YTB50, and that will give you a shocking 50% off, bringing the price down to just over $7 at $7.58. And when you proceed to checkout, you can pay with either a credit card or PayPal, whichever one happens to fit your needs. And this also applies to Microsoft Office products, but again, you're going to get 62% off on Office products with the code YTB62 at checkout. Applying that to the $67.40 price, Office 2019 brings the price down to a stunning $25.61. So I don't know what you're waiting for. If you need your software keys, head over to keysfan.com right now and be sure to use those coupon codes at checkout. YTB50 on Windows products for half off and YTB62 for 62% off on Microsoft Office products. So as always with these port reports, I like to start by jumping into the options menu and showing you what we have in here. Like, like I said at the start, this is going to be a lot of what I'm going to be repeating in this is that if you have experienced Spider-Man, it's pretty much the same thing as far as visuals, graphics, performance. It's all identical uh, to the other Spider-Man I don't think they've made any major enhancements visually between one or the other, it's pretty much the same thing. So options menu also pretty much the same here, or, or exactly the same, I should say. So that's to say we have an exclusive full screen option. You can also play in borderless or windowed mode if you want to. I'm playing at 4K here, my 144 hertz monitor. Uh, NVIDIA Reflex low latency is supported in this game, which is nice, which you will definitely need if you're going to be using uh, frame generation. And uh, this code was provided out to me by NVIDIA, so thank you to the people over at the GeForce team for sending out the game code. We've also got some calibration options in here for HDR, brightness, contrast, all that kind of stuff. The game does have HDR, and I think it looks really good. Uh, it also supports frame generation, which I currently have on, but most of the gameplay you'll see in the video is with it off, and I'll denote it on the screen if it was or not, and we'll jump in and try it with frame generation, swap back and forth too. Upscaling, I have off right now, but it supports IGTI, which is their own in-house form of upscaling uh, from the developers Insomniac. We've also got DLSS, AMD FSR 2.1, and Intel XESS. So you've got a lot of different upscaling options here. Whether you're on an NVIDIA card that supports it or not, you should be able to find an upscaling method that will work well enough for you if you need that extra boost in performance, which you probably will, because this game is very demanding to run and very CPU intensive. And then for anti-aliasing, we have DLAA, which I personally like. That's an NVIDIA one, uh, deep learning anti-aliasing, but it's also you can also run it off. 
and you can turn it on to SMAA, TAA, or DLAA. And I'm noticing now as I'm switching it, like it, like uh, you can see miles in the background, like some of it was changing uh, as I was going through the options. So that's nice that you can kind of see them uh, change it on the fly here right in the main menu. Uh, I am on a custom preset because I've turned off things like motion blur, uh, but this is base, This is max settings here, texture quality, we've got texture filtering, then we've got light and shadow options, shadow quality ambient occlusion with HBO+, Plus, screen space reflections, and quite a few ray tracing options as well. We've got reflections, shadows, you can adjust the resolution of the reflections, and the geometry detail of the reflections, as well as the object range and how... Uh, far off they will start to render in and out and this is a very CPU demanding option. Digital Foundry did a great breakdown uh, when Spider-Man launched a few months ago for the PC and all that stuff that they talk about in their video will hold true for this game as well. We also have geometry options in here for level of detail, traffic density, crowd density, hair quality, and weather particle quality and this is again this is as high holy god look at his hair when it changed it. It just it went from him like it like it looked went from like he looked like he really took care of his hair and had a nice wave cap to looking absolutely terrible. If we get back on his face in a moment I'll try switching it again. I want to see that. Uh, there we go. I want to see let's, let's switch it to very low. Whoa his hair looks horrendous. You, your mother wouldn't let you out of the house like that boy. Come on. You gotta get that that fade tightened up. <laughs> get that fade tightened up my dude. <clears throat> We've also got various camera effects which you can toggle on and off, some which you'll almost certainly want to toggle off. We've got depth of field, bloom, lens flare, chromatic aberration, and vignette, which I was running off both of those because they're terrible, as well as motion blur strength. We've also got a field of view slider, which doesn't give us exactly what the degree is. By default, it was at four, I believe, and I adjusted it up to six, and it seems pretty good. We've also got film grain strength, which I completely turned off because, again, it's terrible. And we have sharpness. So those are all of the display and graphics options that we have for the game. Like I was saying there at the start, same as, as Spider-Man, Nixus handled the port for this as well as Spider-Man. And I think they did an exceptional job with what they have. Um, you know, on the consoles and stuff, this game has like like the direct storage, like NVMe stuff to make it like alt load textures and things in uh, super duper fast. But on the PC, that's not really much of a thing yet, although NVIDIA did add support for it in their drivers yesterday. It still requires game developers to add it in uh, to be able to get it working and stuff, and hopefully in the future something like Miles Morales and Spider-Man will have um, something like that to help out with performance, because the performance is, it's very tough. It's a tough game to run. It's very CPU demanding, especially if you're using the ray tracing options and all that kind of stuff and really cranking all the options to the max. Um, you're going to you're gonna struggle, and I definitely saw some frame drops um, during the opening uh, mission of the game playing on DLSS quality at the same settings that you saw me using there, but without frame generation. I didn't have any frame generation on during any of the gameplay that you're seeing right now. So all of that stuff was, all the frame generation was completely off. I figured, you know, I'm going to run this off because 99.999% of you out there do not have access to 40 series graphics cards that can even utilize frame generation, even if you wanted to. So that's a thing right now. Not too many people have 40 series graphics cards. And if you want to use frame generation, then you're going to have to own one until AMD comes out with their uh, FSR3 and their own form of frame generation, which will be open source and work on, you know, pretty much any graphics card, which will be nice once that's available and anyone can utilize it, even people on older graphics cards. So looking forward to seeing what AMD can do with that in 2023. But for right now, you know, DLSS quality I felt like was needed, honestly. And even during some sequences, like during the uh, the chase with Rhino, there were definitely some parts where it would just crank all the way down to like in the 30s. Um, and it was just like, it was like, it was just a very taxing scene, lots of particles, but you can also kind of tell it was loading in um, like assets for the next area. So I wouldn't hold it against it too much because mostly zipping around the city and, you know, fighting bad guys and stuff around on the streets of New York the frame rate is fairly consistent and there's not any massive lags uh, or stutters or anything like that, even though my 9900K is a hundred is definitely uh, CPU limited in this game as the GPU will mostly never hit like the full 99% uh, utilization. It'll hover in around 80%, 80 to 90% most of the time. So that's, you know, indicative of the fact that I'm being limited somewhere um, most likely with my CPU as VRAM uh, wasn't an issue as I was playing on the RTX 4080 here, which had 16 gigabytes. Uh, I'm also playing off of a fast NVMe drive, so that shouldn't be an issue there. So it most likely is uh, the CPU, which we saw with Spider-Man. So all, all of, if you had any issues with Spider-Man, 
you're probably going to have the same exact issues here with Miles Morales uh, in terms of performance, but it's still got uh, excellent reviews, very popular on Steam, so uh, I have a feeling it wasn't as much of an issue for most people to be able to get this game running smooth so that they can enjoy it, and these games, they're excellent, and I highly recommend you checking them out if you have not already, um, or wait for them to come onto a sale at some point, because they're definitely worth playing. Now, right now here in the city, I do have uh, frame generation on uh, in this scene right here, but I'm going to go ahead and whack it off. As you can see right here, I'm getting 113 frames per second with frame generation on, um, but I also, ha I don't have DLSS on. I could use, I could use that as well and go ahead and hit apply and let's see what we get there. Now it shoots up to like 120. So the DLSS is not doing a lot there. The frame generation is really doing most of the heavy lifting. So if I run frame generation off with just DLSS quality in the same spot, uh, we go to 80, around 75, 80 frames per second. So this is like the experience I feel like most people are gonna get if, well, if you're on a 4080 on these max settings, ray tracing and, and you, all that kind of stuff with DLSS on quality. This is this would be the experience you would get without frame generation. Uh, like I said, it's mostly over 60. There are some, it does it does dip down a little bit here and there, even with uh, DLSS on, but it runs smooth. Um, you know, if you're on a free sync, G sync monitor, whatever, adaptive sync monitor, then it's uh, gonna be a smooth experience even when the frames do come down below 60 uh, here or there. And for just for argument's sake, we'll go ahead and turn off DLSS completely and see what this thing, the uh, 4080 can do at native resolution here uh, with just DLA on. So we'll go ahead and hit apply on that. And actually still running pretty well. Still running pretty well. Still running roughly almost the same, actually. I guess that's just impressive for the, uh, the 4080. It's still actually staying above 60 frames, if not maybe even running slightly better. Um, or about the same, I would say. It could be, it could be because DLSS does add more uh, load onto the CPU, so maybe alleviating that actually makes it run all the same, I guess. Not better, but the same. Although my GPU, oh, yeah, that dropped down to the 50s. That was pretty rough. So, yeah, honestly, my preferred method of playing this game with access to, you know, a couple of 40 series cards, I would play this game with frame generation on and no DLSS and leave it at native resolution. Um, for me, that would be the ideal uh, way to play it, which is what I'll do here now. Um, go ahead and just whack on frame gen with normal anti-aliasing. No upscaling turned on, and yeah, now the frames are good. It looks crisp. I'm not noticing any, there's no noticeable like input lag being added in because we got the uh, reflex on and all that stuff. So, and for a game like this, it's not going to require like extreme precision, like online competitive play. So even if there is, you know, a little bit more latency, then it's not really a big deal. It's really not a big deal at all. And it this, like this feels and looks the best. Like, that's why I say, like, if I was going to, if I'm, when I'm playing this game, this is how I'm going to play it. Frame gen on, native resolution, no DLSS upscaling at all, because this is, this is a great experience. Hey, Flatiron Building. Um, yeah, frame generation's awesome. I don't know why it has all these haters out there. It looks, it looks great. Like, do you see any visual artifacts or issues in this whatsoever? Like, no, the artifacts that can show up are almost imperceivable to the naked eye. Like pretty much you need like high speed cameras to, to order to, or recording systems that don't even exist yet in order to be able to see some of the artifacts that happen with frame generation. So I'm a fan of it and I would definitely opt to use it if you have access to it for Miles Morales. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I'm gonna to go ahead and get out of here. As I said, this game is available today uh, for 50 bucks. I'm not sure of the exact release time. I think it's like 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Um, I know reviews can go out at 8 a.m., but I'll still be rendering the video at that point in time. So uh, if you can get it, get it. It's, uh, it's a good game. If you enjoyed Spider-Man, you'll like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll catch you next time for another video. And also, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, ahead of it, obviously. Happy holidays. Ta-da!